How weird are Australians? Probably not as weird as British people that go on YouTube to talk about countries that they now live in. But if you're thinking of moving here, or you just want to comment about my stupid opinion, then this is a random number of things that you need to know about Australians before you move. Australians are the most friendly English-speaking people in the world. It's a fact. And this doesn't also count for all of Australians, because sometimes their friendliness can seem a little bit superficial. But not like Americans who just pretend they're your mate, particularly if they need a tip. Particularly for foreigners that move to Australia, I think that this is down to Australia's isolation and just an element of global curiosity. Australians are friendly because they're genuinely curious to know more about you. But there could be a problem with this. If you're the type of person that's used to boasting about yourself because you're just f***ing awesome all of the time, then you're going to find out how long that Aussie friendly curiosity is going to last. Because if you're too cocky, then you're just going to find out that that friendliness turns into, they don't really care, mate. Aussies can be initially friendly, and if you're friendly back to them, that will turn into what Australians really value, and that is trust. And then you can just be friendly all of the time. What a wonderful world that would be to live in. There is no pretending to be posh in Australia. Now in the UK, there was a massive class system in how you looked and how you dressed, what you drove. Everything about your life indicated what kind of social class you were in. And one of the main things that used to piss me off about living in the UK was how formal you always needed to pretend to be just to maintain this idea that you were in fact superior in some way. Casual conversation and a relaxed demeanor are pretty common in Australia. And no one really cares about your background. No one pretends to ask you things in a certain way, maybe in case you get offended. People in Australia tend to be pretty direct. So if you're not used to people asking you things that might seem a little bit risque, you might need to get used to it. Australia could not be for you. Australians are the most patient people on the planet. And if you live in a country as large as this, you have to get pretty good at waiting. Lots of westernized cultures have this intrinsic idea that they should get everything instantly. Well, in a country where it's not uncommon to get an Amazon delivery two days after you ordered it, oh, I know that's really slow. Just get over yourself, mate. I'm not even going to say that you have to wait for things of good quality, because most of the time it's just cheap crap from China as well. Aussies love queues. That's another form of waiting. Sometimes they even love queues so much that they don't even get in the queues and just wait around in a big huddle. Everyone knows who's next. Don't try and push in or you will very quickly be called whatever swear word is going to get your attention fastest. You cannot take the out of an Australian. Now I've said before that Australian humour is different and one of the things that they are best at doing is taking the out of themselves. Aussies have a good sense of humour, sometimes dry but most often self-deprecating. If you want to make friends with an Aussie, take the out of yourself and preferably before they do for you anyway. You can't get offended by something that you say about yourself which everyone else was thinking anyway. In fact, it's a very good way to look deep within inside yourself. Look at your major flaws and realise how shit you are. <laughs> That's me laughing at how shit I am. Australia is one of the most, if not the most, ethnically diverse cultures in the world. And despite these differences, Australians roll deep. I have never lived in a country with such high community spirits. No matter who you are, as long as you're nice, Australians are always there to lend a helping hand, especially in a time of crisis. My dickhead dog jumped the fence the other week and the local kids brought him back for me before the warden got round and charged me like 300 bucks to pick him up. Australians are very quick to volunteer their time. If it's for the greater good, there's always an Australian there to pick up a bit of litter, turn a few snags on the barbecue, or do whatever is needed to lend a helping hand. How hard does an Australian have to work? Well, the answer is as hard as they want to. Work-life balance is highly valued in Australia. If you want to work really hard, you can. If you want to tell someone else to work really hard and they don't want to, they're going to tell you to f off. When Australians do want to work hard, they work bloody hard. And considering for a lot of the time it's probably more than 30 degrees outside, I sometimes wonder how they actually manage to function. Oh wait, yeah. Aircon, or those big hats that they wear outside. If you come from a culture where you're expected to work all of the bloody time, then you might be pleasantly surprised to understand that Australia has many different flexible working arrangements. Probably brought around by the fact that there's Thirsty Thursdays and Early Knock Off Fridays. When you're working in a professional environment where everyone's on first name terms, they're all taking the f out of each other anyway, it makes perfect sense that eventually you're going to come to a collective agreement that you've worked bloody hard enough and now it's time not to work that bloody hard, and normally with a beer. Pound for pound, Australia is one of the most successful sporting nations anywhere in the world. Australians are passionate about sports. 
So passionate that even if they don't like the ones that the rest of the world plays, they just make up their own ones. Whether you are a participant or a spectator, there is definitely a sport in Australia for you. Even one of the obscure ones. What's probably gonna set you out a little bit is if you just don't like sports. I don't know why you wouldn't like sports. You get to sit outside, get a bit of vitamin D. Even if you don't wanna take part, you just get to watch some moderately athletic people do it and sip on your favorite refreshment. In a country where things don't happen instantly, I don't know what else you'd rather do. And yes, this is a slightly weird angle. Look at my new desk. I'm actually pretty proud of this thing. It's all new and it goes up and down and stuff. Big shout out to Flexi Spot. They're not paying for this, they just kindly donated one to me. Because my old one kind of died a death. It's one of those ones that goes up and down and stuff. Look at that. I really could stand up at this thing, look. So I guess if you are one of those people that wants to stand up at your desk, because apparently I heard, no, no, I didn't actually hear it, I Googled this. If you stand up rather than sit down, it burns like 40 more calories an hour. Is that really worth it? But it's a pretty decent upgrade on my last one. And even at its highest, it's still pretty sturdy. Like I don't want to wobble it too much and take the piss, but it seems pretty decent to me. And it's got four different functions, so you can set it to whatever height you like. Two normal USB ports and one USB-C. It's got a nice little bamboo effect. There's the motor they got, pretty powerful. Just put it down a bit. And if you do want to keep the top reasonably clean, it's got this built-in tray that I just put my keyboard in. I guess I could put other stuff in there as well. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. And if you're super fancy, they come in a range of different colors. You can get black ones. I think you can even get glass tops if you're into that kind of look. But if you're in the market for a new stand-up desk, a quieter operation than the noise that comes out of my face, and a fancy fast chargey option for your phone, then check out the link in the description below and get yourself what I think is a pretty decent desk. Wait, did that make it fall over? No, no, it's still there, it's all right. When calling someone a is a term of endearment, you better get used to swearing in Australia. And they won't bleep it out like I do on my videos. YouTube doesn't like it when I swear. Casual swearing in Australia is pretty common and not really a taboo subject. They do it on the radio. People do it at work. Just remember to know your audience, know how formal you need to be with your boss. And as a general rule, you don't get to call him a until he calls you a first. I think that's a pretty good rule anyway for swearing in Australia. Don't swear unless you've been sworn at. And if you're driving alone in your car in Australian traffic, then swearing is fair game. It's probably expected. They say in England that if you drive for two hours, the local accent will have changed at least twice and they'll have a new name for bread rolls. Now the same can be true in Australia, but at 32 times the size of the UK, you just have to drive a little bit further. The states in Australia can be very different. Not just in the way that they call things different names, or what sports they prefer. Yeah, you're really not gonna fit in Australia if you don't like the sport. The weather is vastly different, as I'm told whenever I say that Australia is hot, and people in Melbourne or Tassie when it's it down a rain love to correct me. And to emphasize the differences within all the states even more, they all seem to have a bit of a chip on their shoulder about how people from the other states think about them. People from Sydney generally hate Melbourne and vice versa. People from both states generally look down on Queenslanders. It's because they don't know how to bend bananas properly. People from South Australia generally think they're above everyone else. No one on the East Coast cares about Western Australia. Only politicians live in the ACT. And everyone else in Australia thinks it's genuinely funny just to forget about Tasmania. And the only part of Australia that I think doesn't care about anyone is the Northern Territory. And I don't think they really care about any Anything. Australians are generous in pretty much every aspect of their life, but the bit that I think might catch you out as a foreigner is to do with their generous drinking etiquette. How many rounds of drinks have you ever bought in your life? Are you a type of that only ever buys a drink for himself? Whether you drink alcohol or not, you're not going to make many friends in Australia if you can't be prepared to shout around a drinks. If you come from a country where this isn't very common, let me give you one little tip. Just buy the first round. Buy the first round and get it out of the way. You don't want to be looked at as that tight ass foreigner that begrudges buying a round right at the end of the evening. I know, I've been that person. Not every animal in Australia is trying to kill you. And this is testament to the fact that one of the best pastimes in Australia, apart from sports, is just spending time outdoors. Whether you're doing it for the day, or you decide to stay over for the night, or the whole week, or you want to be one of these people that just travels around Australia in a massive caravan. Camping in the bush or visiting the beach are pretty popular holiday activities. With a love for the outdoors and an environment like Australia, why would you need to go anywhere else? 
culture. Yeah, I know. But in Australia, there is a great appreciation for nature and other various outdoor activities. It especially extends to the love for Australian animals. Pretty much everything native is protected. And there only seems to be about one animal that people in Australia don't like. No, it's not magpies, even though they swoop everyone. But sorry if you like them, Australians don't seem to like cats. Some Australians do, but they keep them indoors. Because if you let them go outside and they go on some native fauna rampage, and then you get found out, you're probably gonna get a fine from the council. While pets generally are considered parts of the family, you can't own a rabbit in Queensland. They don't really have a love for little pets like guinea pigs. And if you do have a dog, they pretty much have to be kept on a lead all the time. Australians love to discuss various random topics that coming from your previous culture may have been a no-go area. Think it's not very common to talk about money? An Aussie will talk to you about money. Wanna learn something about religion? I mean, they're pretty Christian here, but they'll talk to you about religion too. They even got an opinion about politics. Well, as long as you're taking the out of politicians, you're probably gonna be able to talk about that as well. The bit that you might struggle with is just how they express themselves about all of those different things with the fruity and wonderful words that you're thinking, is that a new swear word that I've not heard or is that just a way that they've shortened the language even further? Just remember to ask a few questions and you'll find out what it is that they're really talking about. And if you want to know more about Aussie lingo and in particular what words I've struggled with, then watch this video. See you next time.